Rightio, right, yeah. good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. With me, I have Major General Jake Elwood, the National Coordinator for our response to the bushfires across Australia. My name, for those I haven't met or had an interaction with, is Greg Bilton. I'm the Chief of Joint Operations. I'll give today's operational brief, and then from this point on, each day, General Elwood will give a briefing. At times, I may have to come back and give briefings if he's travelling and interacting with our various joint task forces across the particular states. What I'd like to do today is just start with some context before I actually give the operational briefing. The mission for us has two aspects. One aspect is providing support to the ongoing firefighting. We have been undertaking this mission for many months now, providing support to the various rural fire services, country fire authority across uh, both New South Wales and Victoria and recently it's extended now also to the country fire service in South Australia. That has been going for several months. The second aspect of our mission is to provide support to the interagency response conducted by the states and also the federal government. We will make a contribution as part of an integrated team in providing effects upon, uh, across both New South Wales, Victoria and also South Australia. We will also investigate over the next few days any opportunities to play a role in Tasmania as well. You'll be aware there's a number of fires also have been burning for some period of time in that state. The um, way I'd like to run the brief today is to just go through now uh, the various activities we've undertaken, principally over the last 24 hours or what happening now. And I'll start with Victoria. So in Victoria, we'll be aware that there's been an ongoing evacuation of personnel from Mallacoota. That continues. Uh, the ship, an amphibious ship called HMAS Chules, is sitting off Mallacoota at the moment. It returned from evacuating about 1,025 people to Western Port Bay and it's returned and provided a series of logistic stores, particularly fuel, to uh, allow the generators that are providing electrical power in Mallacoota to continue to run. It's also providing emergency supplies and stores, and further liaison is being undertaken with uh, the people that are still located in Mallacoota to see if anyone has actually changed their mind and might wish to be evacuated. Concurrent with that, there has been an ongoing evacuation of personnel out of Mallacoota and up to 350 people who had registered a day or two ago have been moved to East Sale by aircraft. Today, unfortunately, you may be aware from other media reports that we're unable to move people out today due to cloud cover and it's not possible to fly in or out of Mallacoota, but we believe we may have up to another 300 people to move from Mallacoota. Uh, over the next few days and as the weather clears and the opportunity arises we will use rotary wing and fixed wing aircraft to move people out of Mallacoota. The important point is that Chules will remain as a distinct and clear line of support and help provide reassurance to the community in Mallacoota that we maintain that connection. More broadly in Victoria there are 18 remote villages and locations that we need to visit uh, to identify what impacts have occurred in those particular locations. These are the areas that can't be accessed by road. So far, eight of those have been visited over the last 24 hours or so, and we have another 10. And that, that process is in, um, in play right now. As we move teams in, these are multidisciplinary teams that allow us to make an assessment of what's happening on the ground, provide an immediate response, and it's in cooperation with state agencies. So we will take authorities, whoever it is applicable to take, with us um, and allow them access as well to be able to provide advice and uh, back to their own agencies about restoring power, restoring communications, providing medical services, etc. Et Incorporated in our teams is also, if you like, an immediate medical capability as well, where we can provide medical support to people that may require may require it in those locations. That work continues and will continue. The uh, other work that's ongoing is also occurring up in uh, the northern part of Victoria in proximity of Wangaratta and uh, there's a couple of evacuation centres up in northern Victoria that we're providing support to, again in concert with state 
and soon uh, federal government agencies that will roll out uh, as the Prime Minister has recently announced and we'll uh, interact and integrate with them. The engineering effort also continues and it continues to grow. So we've been bringing engineering assets to Victoria, building on a reserve unit known as 22 Construction Regiment, plus bringing other assets from outside of Victoria to build a, a bigger capability that allows us to play a role in route clearance, access, and assisting the Rural Fire Service develop um, more substantial fire breaks or make gains on fighting the fires over the next few days while the weather has changed. That work will continue and we will continue to grow the force over the, over the next few days as we draw reservists into our organisation and also bring full-time service personnel, including Air Force and Army personnel and equipment, down into Victoria to enable that continued effort. We are also in close consultation with uh, the Forestry Department in Victoria. The reason we're doing that is we want to make sure when we do play a role in clearing routes uh, in particular that we do it in a way that is safe for all concerned, including our own people, but also uh, those others from other departments that might be working with us. And there is a plan to undertake some training and preparation to enable our crews to do that in the most effective and safe way. So that's uh, Victoria to date. Again, what I see really is this concept of us increasing our presence and as more force comes online, more capability, we'll increase our presence across Victoria and we have an excellent relationship with Emergency Management Centre in Victoria and we're able to readily uh, provide these inter-agency uh, multidisciplinary teams into the region to first do assessments and then follow up with what's immediately needed in the various locations around the state. I'll go to South Australia, uh, principally focused on Kangaroo Island. Uh, the key effort there is around water, the provision of fresh water or potable water. Uh, the purification system on Kangaroo Island is uh, broken down and uh, we are going to provide a purification system that will provide a source of emergency water. We can't generate the same amount of water that's generated by the current purification system, but we can provide an emergency supply. As I speak, 64,000 litres of bottled water is being trucked into Kangaroo Island, and we have people involved at the evacuation centre there to make sure that we can distribute fresh water to the human population. And then of course, there are stock that will require water as well, and we'll provide a series of water trucks in cooperation with South Australia Water. So we're not doing this on our own, we're doing it in cooperation with uh, South Australia Water so that the effort is coordinated and as effective as it possibly can be. Uh, there's also the unfortunate circumstances confronted by many of our farmers uh, with regards to the loss of livestock and uh, we're helping the local authorities to bury dead livestock, livestock that's been lost as a result of the fires. And we'll continue that effort, I think, over the next 36 to 48 hours. This is critical work, particularly from a health perspective, and we can make a contribution and we will, or we will but I don't necessarily see us as the entire or major effort. It is part, part of a contribution to a broader effort. So again, our relationship in South Australia, well integrated, works seamlessly from my perspective in terms of coordinate, coordinating tasking and enables us to provide effective support that is complementary to the work of the other agencies. If I can now just move to New South Wales. And again, that same theme of expanding our presence in New South Wales is a theme I'd like to sort of highlight through the various activities that we're doing. There are a number of places that we've had small recon teams go out to, and now we're starting to move a larger footprint or respond with the sorts of services and capabilities that we can provide in concert with what might be provided by other agencies. In particular, uh, we are running a logistics capability out of Tumut, and we're looking to, and in fact this is ongoing, to provide support into Tarkata, Adelong, Gilmore, Tumbarumba and Batlow. Uh, Batlow in particular was severely um, impacted by the fires. There are some other places that are coming to light now. Selwyn is another uh, town that has also been devastated by the fires and we'll look to as, as soon as possible provide an element of support. So it's a fairly dynamic environment, but we have the capacity to uh, transport people and move people, our own and those of interagency, 
to go and address the problems in these various locations and at least provide, in the first instance, an immediate response. On the coast itself or around that uh, south coast area, uh, we accompanied the SAS at Maruya, uh, conducting damage uh, observation and public outreach and uh, building impact assessments for the reccees and I expect that again we'll follow on as you are aware from previous briefings HMAS Adelaide sits off the coast uh, of Eden along now with uh, MV Sycamore which is a smaller naval ship uh, and that just gives us some capacity and then I've also uh, been able to allocate a greater level of helicopter capability to lily pad if you like off those various amphibious ships and just be able to um, expedite our support. One thing I'll say um, that's been a very important um, addition to our efforts and uh, further focused our efforts as an ADF in support of New South Wales has been the uh, appointment of Assistant, Assistant Commissioner Willing. He um, has been appointed by Commissioner Mick Fuller to provide a direct liaison officer for the ADF so that we can be uh, as active and expedite our effort as quickly as possible. So as resources roll in, that uh, police officer, senior police officer being provided to help us be as effective as possible in the way we integrate. I really welcome that. Uh, we've got a fantastic relationship with New South Wales. We are well integrated with New South Wales. We have been for months. This just allows that additional capability that's coming into and becoming available to be used and employed, pardon me, most appropriately. Um, in regards to uh, Adelaide sitting off the south coast there in proximity of Eden, we have been to Eden, Naruma, uh, Wamboin. Uh, we continue to have presence in Eden. Again, we're coordinating with local state authorities to provide that immediate effect. We also have um, those engineering organisations I spoke about that continue their work at Maitland, Mudgee, Nowra and Southern Highlands. And sorry, I spoke about that uh, yesterday in my briefing as well. And uh, essentially at this stage, we uh, will also hub our helicopter capability. And I'd just like to focus a little bit on the international effort here as well. I'm using two uh, critical nodes for air support. One is the Naval Air Station at Nowra, and that provides a footprint over southern New South Wales, and the other area is the uh, airfield, the Air Force airfield at East Sale. Uh, both of those form critical nodes in terms of providing aviation coverage, both fixed wing and helicopter coverage over the south coast and Gippsland. I also have the capacity to push helicopters into the Snowy Mountain area and also, and fixed wing aircraft, and also into South Australia if required. And then lastly, we're able to operate aviation capabilities off the amphibious ships as well, which gives us greater capacity as well along the South Coast. Um, New Zealand has kindly, and we, and we take it with great gratitude, will provide three helicopters. The first of those will arrive tonight. Um, those three helicopters will be employed from Nowra. They will provide support to the Rural Fire Service and take on some of the fire mapping roles. They'll, they'll have that function, that immediate operational function. They will also send a company of engineers that will be employed in New South Wales as well, most likely in the South Coast region. So again, uh, we're grateful for the provision of that support so rapidly from New Zealand. Um, the Singaporeans uh, have agreed to provide two CH-47 Chinook aircraft, they're heavy lift aircraft. They have the same model aircraft as Australia. We have four of those aircraft located in sale. They will join those aircraft in sale and again operate from that, that particular hub, providing support across uh, Victoria, New South Wales, including support off the amphibious ships as required. So we've got a particularly solid laydown of aviation coverage across the worst hit areas of New South Wales and Victoria, and I have clear reach back into South Australia uh, as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for today, subject to your questions. Could you give a bit of an outline of the reserves call up, uh, what numbers we're looking at, how many have been processed, I understand you're retroactively processing some? Yeah, that's correct. So um, we have uh, 497 in service, deployed in the field, working with the teams at the moment. 
Um, obviously, they work as part of an integrated Australian Defence Force organisation. Uh, so they're not. We've got a number of full-time personnel out in the field as well. And then each uh, location, each joint task force, has the capacity to process, process between 80 and 100 reservists a day. Uh, I don't have numbers yet on how many are flowing through, given we established those yesterday. Uh, we've already processed uh, close to 400. Uh, we haven't all of those 497. There's a bit of a, a retrospective work to be done, so it's, I think it's close to 400 process, and then we've got others moving through. So I'll keep you updated on how that proceeds. But at this stage, I think uh, that's my view been quite a successful initial start, and we'll work from there. Uh, I understand that they're integrated, but are you <coughs> able to indicate what areas um, some of those reservists are now operating in, in what state or, or what region? I uh, they're in all states. Uh, predominantly, uh, they make up the bulk of the force in New South Wales, so that's come from nine brigades. So the emergency support force that's in Kangaroo Island now is predominantly reservists, and that's about 130 uh, uniformed personnel. I'm sorry, I don't have the exact number with me today. Uh, in Victoria, it's a mix of both, and it's about 50, 30 per cent of the force's reserve at the moment roughly, and it's a similar percentage in New South Wales. And I see that growing over time. And what that'll allow us to do over time also is in sustaining our effort is relieve people to re be replaced by others because I think we'll be doing this for a while and uh, we need to factor in, uh, in uh, maintaining a sustainable effort over, over the coming days and weeks. You said th yesterday that 3,000 you felt was a, a fairly good number that you expected to reach in terms of number of reservists. Um, is there any indication of when we might have 3,000 online? Will it be, for example, by Friday when fire conditions are expected? Yeah, I don't have an indication and it's, it's, right now it's hard for me to measure, but I have, um, we're working with the JTFs just to keep a better track and try and uh, give you an understanding of what the flow's like. But I can see this happening over many, many weeks so, uh, because if you can imagine, reservists have a full-time job, a, a job um, in the community somewhere, and uh, people need to make arrangements, and they'll be available for certain periods of time, and so we'll we'll accommodate those. We'll be as flexible as we possibly can to accommodate people. So people may be able to come immediately. Some may be not able to come for two weeks, but we'll work uh, work as flexibly as we can, and we'll use that that inject of, as we build the force to help us sustain the effect. How many people are left in Malacuta and how many of those are seeking evacuation? Uh, I believe there may be up to 300. I've asked, I've actually asked for confirmation, uh, there, but there's 300 we think that want to be air evac. So everyone that's asked to be evacuated has either been evacuated or we have uh, them registered. Um, so you'll be aware that on the Chules, 1,025 went on the Chules, 58 went on Sycamore to Western Port Bay two days ago. Uh, we now think that people might be changing their minds as they sit and wait for access to be gained back to the Princess Highway. So we'll continue to provide options for people to depart. The trouble is their vehicles and caravans, etc., their personal possessions uh, aren't able to go with them. And I know that's an impediment for some people to take up the offer. Having said that, we'll provide with the state authorities whatever uh, emergency support, food, water, electrical power support that we need to, to make sure the population's at least relatively comfortable. It might be Spartan, but they'll be relatively comfortable. When do you anticipate you'll be able to fly in there again? Well, uh, cloud cover. So um, I can go at night, um, if, or the team can go at night if we need to, but I just don't. I don't, I don't know yet from the meteorologist when it's likely to uh, be better conditions. But we'll do it as soon as we can. What's the latest on the three Chinooks from Townsville? I understand one was coming down yesterday. Where is that now based? In? Yeah, so that left Townsville yesterday. It's a two to three day journey to come from Townsville. It's flying uh, into sail. Uh, I'm hoping to see it uh, uh, either late tonight or early tomorrow. Then there'll be a turnaround time and uh, we should be able to employ it in say about 24 to 36 hours time uh, if everything remains on schedule. The other two are having uh, maintenance undertaken, completed, um, so that they're fully functional before they arrive. I'm expecting them towards the end of next, uh, sorry, towards the end of this week. 
And with regards to the some of the work that's being done by engineers to assist while we've got this cooler period in terms of the fire breaks and, and that kind of assistance, uh, are you able to give any more detail about that work? Was that at the presumably at the request of the states? What sort of oh yeah, it's a request of the states. I can go into some detail. So in Victoria, um, uh, in ba Bansdale and Omeo, there's work being undertaken. Uh, in Bansdale and Omeo, it's in direct support of the Rural Fire Service, particularly in the Omeo area. There was also 18,000 litres of diesel fuel delivered to Omeo. Uh, so Omeo has become a bit of a focus at the moment for just getting those emergency supplies in and uh, helping uh, the ongoing fighting of fires. And we are providing an engineering effect and a logistics effect mm -hmm. into that township. Uh, uh, there is also logistics effects into Bansdale. In New South Wales, uh, the engineering effect is at Maitland, Mudgee, Nowra, and uh, in a number of locations in the Southern Highlands as well. Uh, in Southern Highlands and Mudgee, it's associated with uh, improving fire breaks and helping with access for uh, rural fire service. Just to confirm, the Chules, is it Malacuta waiting to evacuate people if they change their mind? and providing logistics. It's principally for logistics, but it's also really importantly providing that sense of reassurance that they're not completely disconnected. I know it's a sea link, I know it's not a road, but it's still important, I think, for the public there to know that if something catastrophic happened around them, there is an ability to move more people and there's that lifeline, if you like, of logistics support. Now, Chules can produce a vast amount of fresh water. It's got a, a significant amount of fuel on it. There's a number of things that just help with uh, the provision of those essentials uh, to help people who might be uh, residing there at Malakuta at the moment. The PM has announced this afternoon that one of the things the ADF will be assisting with is uh, going in with some pop-ups for Service Australia going into those communities. Are you able to give any detail about the role there and where expected that will go? Yeah, so I, I think it's another way of describing the model that we've already applied. So go in reconnaissance, understand what's happening, provide an immediate effect. Um, that might be medical, it might be water, food, just a basic effect where, it, uh, where, it's, uh, where there, there is that immediate need. And then follow on with what other capabilities might help. But this is where I think we work really closely with the states. We take state agency members with us uh, when we do those trips into remote communities and then we come back as a team with a group of capabilities or resources that are required. And then uh, we, we need to maintain a presence and we'll, we'll link in either with emergency centres um, established by the states if they've been established in those locations or we'll form a, or we'll make a contribution to one of those interagency pop-ups, but we'll be the key point is we'll be integrated. Mm -hmm. And, and just lastly, are you able to speak to the reaction that your members are getting on the ground from the general public? There obviously must be, uh, you, you've said that a lot of it's about letting them know that there is that comfort, that there is that access to help if they need it. What's the reaction been like? Yeah, I think, uh, frankly, where we are able to get in and support, uh, mostly positive. In fact, it's overwhelmingly positive. Uh, and I've also got uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen and airwomen that want to do this work. So... It's like meeting like in some ways in terms of, you know, wanting to help your fellow Australians. Uh, where we're not able to get to or we haven't been yet, I'm getting a demand signal and it's growing. Um, now, it's really important that we coordinate that effectively with the state and federal government agencies that are, are going to also provide different sorts of support, um, support that they're basically professionals in. So that link up is, is really important and uh, that's why I think our, our uh, very strong emphasis on integration is so important. Thank you very much, have a good day.